Ladies and gentlemen, whenever I feature chess games on my YouTube channel, one of two things goes on. I show you games by some of the best players in the world, or I show you games by some of the best memers in the world, like Guess the Elo. But there are a lot of titled players in the world who play incredible games of chess, and they kind of go unnoticed. And that is why this video is called what it's called. You are about to witness an amazing game. We are currently in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I'm currently in New York City and you're somewhere else, but this game is in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it is being played between Roberto Martin del Campo and Ulvi Bajarani from Azerbaijan. Now, what is going on? A closed round robin event in Charlotte, an international master norm section and a grandmaster norm section. This is the I am norm section. We're just gonna get, we're just gonna go, all right? I'm just gonna show you this game. Let's have some fun. E4, C5. Now, what's, what's nice just before we get started here is that normally in sections with IMs and GMs when they're not playing for any norms, they just make quick draws. They don't really care, but oh no, no. These players got out to it. We have what's known as an open Sicilian. In the open Sicilian, you have knight F3 and D4. And once we get this, we have a Taimanov. Black also has an option here to play a6, uh, and Black also has an option here to play knight f6, which is not a Taimanov Sicilian. I mean, it, it is and it isn't in the sense that this is actually kind of the two or four knight Sicilian. But after queen c7, already now the branches of the game be begin to form. You know, for example, here there is a very aggressive move g4 uh, intended to meet knight f6 with g5. Uh, because you know that that is how black wants to develop. There's also uh, more uh, traditional ways of playing this with bishop 2e3, queen d2, and just a very quick long castle. And that might look something like a6, queen d2, here, and long castles. And th this is like ultra critical. White just sends the king over there. Uh, this game did feature bishop 2e3, but then... Uh, Del Campo played bishop to d3. Now, this is the second most popular move in the position, and uh, Del Campo is in his 50s, and you might be asking, well, why is he 2297? How does that make any sense? How how can an IM be rated 2297? Well, he was 2485 at his peak. He has a, a gold medal at the individual Olympiad for, for Mexico. I mean, super strong player, but as you get older, you don't study as much. You know, you're playing these close round robins. You might be teaching, right? You're not taking it super serious. Gary Kasparov used to play this move a lot. And this move is about to become very clear. So first of all, white castles. That's white's point. White does not want to castle long. White actually wants to castle short, keeping the tension with these knights. You'll notice they're staring at each other. Nobody wants to give way. Um, in fact, to the point that black actually plays the move knight to e5. Now, this is a very provocative move. It breaks a lot of opening principles. You're moving a piece twice. Notice that nobody else has done that. White has, well, when white moves this knight into the middle, sure, but it's a trade. White has given everybody a turn, but black is trying to put this knight on d3 or to g4, so white plays the move h3. Um, you're breaking principles because uh, white has a lead in development, so now you got to catch up a little bit with the move bishop to c5. Um, and by the way, you would say, well, why didn't you just take? Again, because that you, you would be moving a third time, and then I would take with the pawn, actually not the queen, and then play rook c1, and you're going to lose even more time trying to solve the problem of your queen over there. So it's important that if you waste time in the opening, you quickly catch up. So bishop c5. And here, a super common idea. You want to launch your pawns in case your opponent castles. This is a same side attack when the opponent is castled. This is a super useful prophylactic move. King to h1, getting off of any problems on this diagonal because there is a bishop there right now. Now we have d6 and white plays this move f4. Everything white has done so far has been played before uh, and is very logical. You play king h1 to kind of get off of there. And here, for example, if black were to play the move knight to c6, um, you know, obviously moving this knight would still lose the bishop, but it wouldn't be a check. And white has some aggressive ideas here uh, centered around breaking down the middle of the board. So after f4, black plays the move knight g6, and now white has a really nice armada of pieces set up, but first we need to make another prophylactic move, queen to e1, ready to go to g3, ready to go to h4 in some positions, anticipating the castle and defending the bishop. Okay, we have short castle, and now it's time to attack. Everybody's primed and ready to go, set up. How do we fire? We fire, and this is where the game gets spicy, f5. That is the whole justification between this entire system. That is the most protected square that you can find in the white position. Everybody's supporting the advancement of that pawn. Taking it 
allows white more of an initiative. The knight can come here or the pawn to attack the knight, right? So black plays the move knight back to e5. But that allows the queen that we just moved there to go to h4. And white has kind of set up everybody. Everything is looking nice here. b5 played, and the idea is to play bishop to b7 and go over here. Now, this is where the true brilliance begins. Uh, from here forward, um, absolutely unbelievable stuff begins to happen. So I appreciate your patience if you made it five minutes into this video. If you didn't last five minutes, that's okay. Um, you know, hopefully that doesn't extend beyond YouTube videos in your life. But anyway, for those of you that had the stamina to make it this far, um, white uncorks an absolutely savage move. I've never seen this in my life. Rook to f3. Now, that straight up looks like knight takes rook has just absolutely been blundered. Um, if I'm looking at this natural moves, maybe rotate this knight to the attack. I mean, I'm thinking pawn storm, but black is pretty well set up here. And black can strike back in the center if you just storm with the pawns and start trading off parts of your attack. This is just not going to work. Rook f3 is a ludicrous move. Now, Knight takes f3 was played in the game, and it obviously is the question of what the hell is white doing. The computer gives this as the best line. Pawn takes f5, ignoring the rook. White insists on the rook being taken, because otherwise the rook will come here. That's the whole point. You're trying to do something known as a rook lift up and over to join the attack. Takes, and now g takes damaging your own structure, bringing in another piece because you have one, two, three, maybe four, maybe five, and maybe six. All six pieces are gonna attack. Black just has a knight defending. Bishop b7, rook to g1, only move. Bishop takes f3, check. And now you can take with a knight. Bishop takes e3, attacking the rook. You ignore that threat, and they can't take you because of this. And we have this. The queen comes out of danger, attacking the bishop, and black has to go queen c5, allowing knight takes g1. A position which is three pieces, two knights and a bishop versus two rooks and a pawn. Technically, black is up two points, but white has a lot more activity, and the pieces still have ideas where they can go, coordinate, and try to... I mean, that's what the computer says. And the computer needs to take a walk and get some fresh air because, it, you know, now it's time with, with, with rook f3 and knight takes. Okay. G takes. Martin del Campo has sacrificed a rook for a knight, and he's done it to open up the G file. Okay, black plays queen b6, loading up the cannons on the knight on d4. Now, of course, naturally, you're thinking of a move like knight back to e2 to restructure, but the problem is black will immediately lash out with this, and you're not going to guard. So, queen b6, del Campo once again detonates a haymaker. The next rook has come to g1. So now rook g7 is super soft, and this is under pressure. If black were to just get out and defend everything, um, white would begin the process of chopping it all down with moves like e5 or f takes e6, because you are trying to find a way to team up somebody with your queen. And after pawn takes e6, even something like e5 to open up, I mean, you are just ripping through the position here. So rather than retreating, Black says, you know what, after rook g1, I'm going to call your bluff again, dude. I don't know what the heck you're doing. Uh, you don't have queen f6 anymore. You've got to deal with the bishop, and then your rook is under pressure. If you take, then take. There's nothing there. So bishop takes d4. And you're welcome to pause here and find one of the most savage moves I've probably ever seen, leading back to the entire combination after rook 2 f3. Um, by all means, go ahead. Uh, the move here, ladies and gentlemen is the disgusting crisscross applesauce move e5. The bishop has now been disconnected from the knight, so it's actually under attack. The queen has its door opened to the bishop, so the threat is bishop takes bishop. And if bishop takes e5, then of course the queen is just lost. So that's not any good. So Everything is wrong here. If d e5, then the knight doesn't have a guard anymore. Queen f6, etc. The bishop, the rook all join together. In the game after e5, black played the move. Bishop takes bishops. Now black is up eight points of material and is about to take your rook. And you say, oh, you want my rook? Go ahead and take it. 
So now, black is up, well, black played king h8 in the game. If black were to take on g7, for a moment, black would be up 12 points. Luckily, that's not how the game of chess works. You can't just hit the pause button. There's no mercy rule. If king g7 would have happened, we've gotten, we would have gotten pawn takes, f6. This is really important, by the way, because if you take with the queen after this, you have no more checks. Not only do you have no more checks, you have no more threats. Pawn takes e6 no longer threatens anything. You would think that you want to get up close and personal with the king with your most powerful piece. No, the pawn needs to come here to force the king back. Disallow it any escape. And remember why your queen is on h4. Don't just go in with the queen. The queen's on h4 for a reason. It's trying to get to h7. So in the game after rook takes g7, black decided not to take. But white insisted with the move rook takes h7. And now if the move king to g8 was played, there's mate in two here, 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 pawn takes f6, or in this case, you actually can take with the queen. So black decided to take the rook, and now the very calm, very cool, calm, and collected f6. And black resigned. And black resigned because there is nothing that can be done. That bishop, which went to d3 early on in the opening, proved to be the one deciding factor of this game. Now, black could delay this. Black can play bishop to h6. You take. Black can then sack the queen on g1. And you would take. And then black can give you one more check. And then black can give you one more... Yeah. It, it, but black decided to resign the game after the move f6. Up 11 points of material. White spoon-fed black all of the pieces until his stomach popped. And this actually shows you how incredible a mix of opening preparation and expertise is. This is truly the entire way you're supposed to play this bishop d3 system. It is truly the way. Now, the way black played this, by playing knight f6 and knight e5 and bishop c5, black used the pieces in the center of the board, but nowadays it seems quite common for black to begin counterplay in these positions with b5 as fast as possible, bishop b7, and delay a little bit what white can do, because if you see that you hang around too long, white gets the optimal setup here with the two bishops, the pawn, the queen, and just goes on a rampage. f5 in the spirit of Gary Kasparov, who has played like this, and then, oh my, I mean, what a move. Rook to f3, and then just the, I mean, e, e, yeah, wow. And, you know, the truth is, I saw this game. Um, it was recommended to me by my good friend, International Master Alex Ostrovsky, who's live at Charlotte, in Charlotte, playing in the Grandmaster Norm section. And it just made me think that games like this are played all the time around the world. And uh, we got to feature. We got to feature this. Because, the, you know, the best players in the world are great. And these, these are some of the best players also. They have some of the strongest titles, but you never see them because they don't, they don't play these ultra-prestigious events. And also, they're not submitting for guests the ELO. Now... Folks, I hope you enjoy that. Do let me know if there are other games by players of a similar, maybe 25, 2400 strength for the future. We could find some cool games about. If you made it this far in the video, you are amazing. And uh, if you've been wondering why I've been recording this in the dark, it's because we just recently moved and uh, I don't have a lamp. Like we don't have an overhead light in this room and my lamp is arriving tomorrow, so. But I figured I would record even if it's 11 o'clock at night because why not? All right, folks. Peace out, and we'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.